Yes, there is a puller to do this job. You can buy one. I'll put a link in the description, but you don't need one. And you can do this with a hot dog bun. Between an engine and a transmission is it's it's fairly precise but also fairly approximate in fact in order to make sure everything stays where it belongs and there's not weird loads on on bearings and seals and all that kind of stuff there's a variety of things that keep everything on track when you have a transmission for an example a manual transmission such as this manual transmission right here this is the manual transmission that came out of the truck that was attached to my engine you will notice the input shaft on the manual transmission is very small on the tip and you look at the on the back of the engine and the hole is quite large and there's a reason for that there's a little piece it's called in this case a pilot bearing because this has bear needle bearings and the like in it and that goes in the end of the crankshaft and it supports the input shaft to the manual transmission to keep it right where it needs to be and to support the weight of the clutch uh, plate and all the torque going into the transmission out of the engine now oftentimes the input shaft of the transmission and the engine are going at dramatically different speeds anytime the clutch is depressed that's the case and so you need this bearing to keep it in place and yet spin now sometimes it's a bushing it's just a solid piece of brass in there that works fine too this is just a heavy-duty truck application, so it was that. However, when you're doing what I'm doing and you're switching it to an automatic transmission, this bearing needs to come out of the engine. And the reason why is on an automatic transmission, like this C4 that I'm putting in, it hooks up to the torque converter. Now, the torque converter, which is this guy right here, you will see that it has a much larger tip on it than the transmission input shaft. And this goes in the same place. This goes in the end of the crankshaft. And then these bolts bolt to the flex plate that has a starter ring on it. And all of this always spins the same speed as the engine. All that differential or, or uh, difference in speed happens inside the torque converter and you look at the input shaft size on the automatic you will notice that it's quite different from the uh, from the manual transmission and that's because it's down inside the torque converter that all the magic happens with the when the uh, input shaft of the transmission isn't moving at all or is moving at a slower speed than the engine then there's slippage in this torque converter because it's a it's a type of hydraulic pump that moves the engine and takes the place of the clutch and allows the engine and transmission to move at different speeds without pushing on an extra pedal one thing that you will notice is that the pilot bearing and the part of the torque converter that fits in the end of the crankshaft have the same outside diameter and so they fit in the same place and they serve the same a similar function just slightly different but all of this works together to keep things where they belong so that hundreds of thousands of miles later everything is still turning and spinning and working the way it ought to work so the big deal is is how do you get this stupid bearing out of the crank this bearing right here is press fit it's not a loose fit it's nice and snug in the in the uh, crankshaft 
So it can be a real adventure to get it out. Let me show you what it takes. I want to thank everybody that watches my channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I, and I want to ask you a favor. I want, to, I want you to go down there at the bottom and click that you like the video. And also, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Check, make sure you have. And one additional thing. Think of somebody in your life that might enjoy watching these videos and share them with them. Because, frankly, I need to grow the channel. I need it to get bigger. I need more people watching. And the reason for that is I need to build a new shop. My shop is 101 years old. And, you know, it's all I could afford. But if my channel grows to the point where I can, I am going to replace my entire shop with a brand new one. Let me know what you'd like to see. If there's certain parts of the project you want me to focus on, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know. And by all means, like, subscribe, and share the channel. You may think that a dental tool or some similar item like that, that you can just reach in there and grab it and kind of pry it out, would work. But no, that's just not the case. That's not how it works. <laughs> you may also think that taking a screwdriver and a hammer to it, you can get a little, you know, edge under it and get it out. But guess what? That doesn't work either. That does not want to come out of there. And there's a few hacks out there. One, you can fill it full of grease and shove a bolt in there. But that is one messy proposition. Another one is you take some bread. Take the bread and you just... Mush it up, stuff it in there. And just keep stuffing the bread in there. It's got to be kind of moist. It can't be old dry bread. And you just... That's, some is in there. Let's get some more. And just keep packing it in there works if it's moist bread. If it's dry bread will just pack. And so you just keep packing it in there until this and beating on it. Yeah, it's starting to come out. It's working its way out. You can see right here. I'll show you. You can see Right there. And it's hard to tell. But there's a gap forming. Get some more of this bread in there. See, because as it pushes it out, it takes more bread. And you just keep packing it in there. That's the pilot bearing. It came right off. And what happened was I shoved the bread down in the hole. It built up behind the pilot bearing. And the pressure from forcing this bolt through with the hammer, caught, it took up the space and it hydraulically, and I know bread's not a liquid, Basically, I was pounding it to a liquid, and it shoved that bearing right out of there. That would not have come out without quite the struggle. So that worked out pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's clean the rest of the bread out of the crankshaft. Because now I can mount the torque converter to it, because this was in the way before. Look at that. The bread has basically become a solid liquid kind of sort of thing that just shoved that bearing right out of there. Taking a closer look at the crankshaft, it's nice and clean and plenty of room for what I need. 
This is so awesome. There you go, my friends. That is how you get a pilot bushing or pilot bearing out of a crankshaft. Now, one word of caution. I understand, and I, I personally have not seen the motor, so I don't know. Uh, I was reading one place where a guy tried this with bread on an LS motor, and there was a freeze plug or something like that in the end of the crankshaft behind the pilot bushing that uh, they used to drill the oil ports or what have you in the crank. And when he rammed that bread in there to push it out, it actually penetrate. He actually penetrated that freeze plug and filled his crank full of bread, which was a real pain to clean out. I can imagine that'd be the case. So make sure that your crankshaft doesn't have something like that, so you don't end up making a bigger mess for yourself than you started with. Or you can just go to the link below and get yourself a puller and do it the way the professionals do.